Hello fellow tankers, Space Bandit here with another episode of World of Tanks and today I bring you guest replay. Yes, again we have a guest replay for you guys and again it's in a tank that we showcased just recently. We had a game by Cherry Bomb that we recently showed on my channel but now I received another Vorask replay from player with Gamertag Prof Foodie or the way I'd like to call him Professor Foodie or let's refer to him in this match as just Foodie. So Borask is one of these tanks that I own but I don't necessarily play and from what people are telling me it's a magnificent magnificent tank has beautiful camo doesn't have the greatest penetration but the camo makes this tank so stealthy especially if you're a top tier like Foodie is right here you can pretty much put yourself in a position so close to the opposition and they're not able to spot you so he's taking quite aggressive position here on mountain pass and this position is great if you have good camo because you could spot all these guys crossing down the d3 e2 area which is quite important for your team to get early intel as to you know where the opposition is actually moving now one big issue actually a couple of big issues that are happening right here first of all he spotted all these guys crossing no one's shooting and i found this in some of the lower tier games this is quite normal like the players just don't know where to shoot or where to position themselves in order to shoot across the map because he's gotten absolutely like zero assisted damage out of this and he should have gotten at least some i would expect at least 600 to a thousand of assisted damage from this position now second issue is the fact that there are tanks sitting behind him like this tiger 131 guys last thing you want to do is sit behind a tank with good camo because whoever is aiming at you sitting behind foodie in this case got lucky because he didn't get hit but yeah opposition will be targeting you instead it will be hitting a tank with better camo that's sitting right in front of you never do that never sit behind a tank with a good camo just lesson for you all new tankers out there but anyway, Foodie decided to relocate. He's going to take this position here. This is going to be a quite OP position for him because, again, with his very good camo and good view range, he should be able to sit here and spot these guys, like that guy here, in E4. Or if there's opposition creeping down the Death Valley on the bottom, you'll be able to spot them as well. So he's going to put a couple of shells to that guy. Unfortunately, second shell does not come off. Now, one thing about Borask and... Again, I don't play this tank at all. Maybe I should actually pull it out of my garage just to see what it's like. But one main thing about this tank is the penetration. It's quite weak. Base penetration on the APCR rounds is 190 millimeters. And penetration on premium APCR is 240 millimeters. So yeah, penetration is definitely lacking in this tank. So I've seen many players playing just using premium ammunition. And, you know, it's quite viable in this situation because you don't have much penetration so if you're going against tanks like russian heavies you won't be able to pan him now take a look at this he's firing a couple shells into vk36 which is a tier six two tiers lower than him and he's not able to penetrate him with standard rounds now i admire foodie for playing with just standard rounds but nowadays boys and girls it's a premium spam all the way across everybody's firing premium so i wouldn't feel bad if i was firing premium rounds in this situation so i admire him for doing this but yeah you will lose games more often than not if you're not using your premium rounds nowadays such is life in world of tanks anyway so he's got plenty of targets over here as you notice here he's targeting this vk36 he's got this is3 in front of him he's also got the kv3 one thing that he needs to keep in mind around the corner at j2 these tanks have won their flank over there. So in a split second here, he will be flanked. So he's going to have to pay attention to the map. At the same time, look at the camo on this tank. I mean, he's firing from such a close distance, like 360 meters, something of that nature. And he's not getting spotted. I mean, he's firing against two Russian tanks that have shitty view range in the first place. So, uh, you know, that's understandable. And also VK36, which is a tier 6, doesn't have good view range either. But still, that is crazy OP camo on this tank. I mean, he's doing it smart, firing from behind the bush here. And that will even increase his camo values. But he's having trouble penetrating these guys. Alright, what's going to happen now? So, again, he needs to pay attention to the guys from around the corner. He's quite vulnerable here. And so far, he's been lucky that 
Artie hasn't been really shooting at him, but for the most part he was unspotted, so that's a good thing. Although Artie likes to blind fire every once in a while. The narcissist who play the victim. Anyway, he's getting flanked right now. And there's absolutely no- But he's lucky that this IS is not targeting him. He's going to try to take the KV-3 out of the game, and he does, which was good. He prioritized the tank with low HP. If you want to win the game, prioritize the tank with low HP. If you're just going for damage, then just go for damage, right? In this situation, he seems like he still wants to win the game, even though his team is losing. Now, this KV-85 is crossing, so he's decided to go behind the rock to make sure he's not spotted. Is he gonna engage that IS-3? Yeah, he's gonna try to engage that IS-3. Again, he's not spotted behind the bush. But now that he pokes too far beyond the bush, he gets spotted. One shell goes in, second shell does not. And such is life. Even from this angle, looking at IS-3 from top down, he still has trouble penetrating him. Can we get serious now? So it's 4v6 right now. Time to rethink the situation. His team doesn't really have any map control, which is ridiculously bad. There are enemy tanks on the bridge at E7, as well as opposition tanks, two medium tanks at J2 location. So at this point, I think he's doing the right thing. He's going to support his medium tank that's currently sitting at J4. So this IS gets spotted. He's gonna have to try to poke out and put a couple of shells into him. Let's see if he can put a couple of shells into him. Whoa, that, that shell goes nowhere. Second shell bounces off of his top plate. Probably better shot selection would be to go for IS's turret because it was turned at this time. But it looks like accuracy of this gun is not the greatest either. Now, since his medium tank is sitting at J5, he got himself closer to the IS because if IS3 pokes out, he should get some protection from his medium tank. At the same time, he'll be able to get to the IS closer and put shells into him without missing. And that's exactly what he does. He's going to do a drive-by, get himself behind that rock, which is a good play. Now IS-3, watch the IS-3. IS-3 is probably going to poke. And he does, but he gets taken out by his friendly, which is great. Now the only problem is Artie Shell. In this situation, he can really get smoked and taken out of the game. But he didn't. And IS is not paying attention to him, so he's able to put two shells into him and takes him out of the game. But unfortunately, there's not a medium tank that came out from the bridge area and puts a shell into him. So now Foodie has to run. Run, Foodie, run! And watch for Artie, watch for Artie. This is usually what happens to me. Blind fire right here. It doesn't come in. Well, now it comes in, but completely different location. All right, good stuff. So it's 3v4 now. So I think at this point, Foodie's thought was go after artillery. I think that's the right play. Got to take the pigs out of the game whenever you can because they can spoil a good game or a good party. So yeah, we don't want them to spoil a good party. So he's going to take care of them. Now, interesting fact about Barask is that its average alpha is 360. So he doesn't even need to load his HE shells in order to take these guys out of the game. All he's got to do is penetrate his shots because both of the Arties are lower tier Arties, so he should be able to easily kill them with two shots. Now, that's a good play. Originally, he was thinking to go up the hill, but instead he decided to cap, which is a good play because if you go up the hill against two Arties and one of them catches you coming up, you're dead. In this situation, you're forcing them to go around the hill and look down at you which they can't really get their guns down. So that was a great play by him. Hamel tried to poke out and put a shell into him, but Foodie takes him out of the game. Now he decided to reload 
Not sure if that's a good play, because if the other Arty decided to charge him right here, he has no shell to fire at him, but it worked out to his advantage, and I think he was anticipating that one of the medium tanks might come around from the bridge area, and there it is. One of them is right there, it's the Cruncher, but his friendly has moved up wisely and takes him out of the game. Now Bellerophon shows up, he still has quite a bit of HP, so Foodie's probably gonna have to go and help out his friendly. His friendly has played a really good game so far, to be honest, because he's in a position to support Foodie, which is great, that's all you can ask from your friendly. Sometimes your friendlies might not be good shooters or good marksmen, but as long as they take good position on the map and support you with crossfire, that's always great. Anyway, he takes out the Bellerophon and look at his damage right now. He's sitting already at 4.9k damage, almost 5k. If he can clean house and kill this piggy on top of the hill right here, he will end up with over 5,000 damage. And that should be a formality right now because piggy has fired and all that's left to do is go up on top of this hill. It may as well take your chances because if you don't kill the piggy, your friendly will. So may as well just go for it and kill him right there. Boom! He takes him out of the game, securing the win for the team. Fantastic game, Foodie. Let's take a look at the end plates and see what he's done. So he finished on top of the team with 5.2k damage, 7 kills, which gives him Devastator Metal, 650 assisted damage which should have been much better than what it is because his team wasn't shooting early in game into all of these guys crossing. But he did finish with 28 penetrating hits. Fantastic game by Fudi. Congratulations. He ends up with Devastator Metal. Class one for this game, which is surprising, but people must be putting ridiculously good games in this tank. He gets a Pascucci Metal as well as Top Gun Metal and High Caliber, of course. He finishes on top of the team with 2076 base XP, beautiful base XP, fantastic game by Foodie. Much appreciated for sending this replay to me, and hopefully, this was entertaining for you guys as well as a little bit educational. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this replay. That's it for now. Until next time, happy tanking, Space Bandit, checking out.